This is a TX6 field mixer by Teenage Engineering. A mixer, audio interface, MIDI controller, sequencer, DJ mixer and synthesizer packed in an incredibly small package of durable aluminum. The TX6 has six stereo inputs and three audio outputs, Bluetooth connectivity, a monochrome display, six faders and 18 parameter encoders, all packed into a device measuring 90 by 62 by 23 millimeter and weighing only 160 grams or 5.6 ounces. And the price tag? A staggering 1200 American dollars. If this was a steak, it would equate to $7,500 per kilo or $3,400 per pound. But how can you use the TX6 Field Mixer by Teenage Engineering? This video is the first of a series of deep dives into this little device. And in this video, we're going to take a closer look at the mixing capabilities of the TX6. So in this video, we're going to have an overlook over the device itself. We're going to look at the faders, knobs, buttons, inputs and outputs, and some of the basic features. In later videos, I will talk about some of the more obscure features like the synth mode, the DJ mode, and some more advanced settings. So this is a very small device. For comparison, here's a pocket operator. And the TX6 is only slightly wider, but shorter than the pocket operator. Included in the package, you'll get a small instruction booklet and a USB-C to USB-C cable. You also get this quarter inch to eighth inch jack adapter that I initially thought was a volume knob. So this device can work as an audio interface, a MIDI device, a mixer, and a synth. It has six 3.5 millimeter jack inputs and a USB-C port for both charging and connecting to other devices. On the back, it has a faux leather finish. On the bottom here, you have the outputs. You have the main outputs, headphone output and auxiliary output. And two function buttons for headphones and auxiliary output. On the front, you'll find 18 knobs that are color coded, are blue, orange, and white. You have six faders that each control their inputs. And for each channel, you have a button that fills different purposes depending on what setting you're in. You have a main control knob right here with a selector button for which you will do most of your navigating. You have a shift button that engages secondary functions for, for the various buttons. And then you have two FX buttons. In order to turn the device on or off, you have a little on off switch right here that you simply flick to the up position. Then you'll see the green LED showing you it's on. This is the same on off switch as the new OP1 field as well. So this will probably give you a small chance of turning off the device unintentionally, but I can't see it being a big problem. So let's look at some of the main features when this device is being used as a mixer. Here I have my OPZ with the line module and I'm going to connect the line out to channel one. Now here you can notice that the display changed, allowing me to choose between stereo, mono and split. And the split setting allows you to have two different mono sources into one stereo track. So for this, we're going to use stereo. And to exit any particular screen, you simply press shift. So now I have my OPZ connected to track number one and I have the main output connected to my recorder. So if I start playing the OPZ, you can hear the sound being routed from track one into my recorder. Now you have some functions that are expected, like the fader controls the volume. And if nothing else is selected, the button will solo a track, which we only have one track right now, so you won't hear the difference. But it can also be set to mute, to mute a track or to temporary solo or mute a track. Now by default, these knobs or potentiometers are set to a three band EQ. So you have the highs, mid 
highs and the lows. Now you can also control several individual parameters of each track. And to do that, you simply press and hold shift while tapping repeatedly on the track button. And you'll see we scroll through the different settings. So we have panning, hard right, hard left, center. We have a filter, so we have a high pass, a low pass, an EQ, and now you can see when I'm trying to turn the knob, we have a blinking a blinking little icon there and this signifies that currently the EQ is assigned to these three knobs so it can't be changed by this knob at the moment we have compressor we have gain and we're back to path now in mixer mode, this knob right here is used to control the master volume out. Next, we have the effects buttons. So effects one is used for send effects, where some of the signal from a track can be sent to the effect before it gets returned. And we can toggle through the effects by holding shift and pressing the button. In the FX1 bank we have reverb, chorus, and delay. Okay, so let's start with the reverb. Currently you can hear that there's no effect applied. And this X indicates that the effect is not turned on. So in order to turn on the effect, you simply press the FX button that you're targeting. Now you can hear we have some reverb. We can also send more or less of the effect to the track by pressing and holding the track button. So now we have 100% reverb. Then we can turn it off by removing it from the track. And that way you can dial in the exact amount you would like. So the next effect is chorus. And in the same way as reverb, it has different intensities, strong, medium, and subtle. Next we have delay, and, next here, uh, and here on the bottom you can see where it says beats, you can choose the subdivision of the delay. So the next set of effects are on the FX2 button. So these effects are not send effects like the FX1 button, where you can dial in exactly the amount you want. These are either on or off for either the master mix or for particular tracks. So in the first one here is a filter. In the same way, you see the X means it's not turned on. So we have to press the FX2 to turn it on. And here you can dial in the low pass filter. 
And in order to dial in the resolution, you press the selector button. Then you can dial in here. So the next effect is a bit crusher. So you have different algorithms. You have the shape, you have bend, you have chip, and then bits. Next effect is distortion. The same here, you have different name distortions. You have push, drive, flow, and destroy. Next one is tremolo, where you can dial in how fast you want the tremolo to go. Here it's barely audible, where you get a clear tremolo. The next two effects are fairly different because they require you to press and hold the FX2 button for them to be applied. So the first one is freeze. You can also dial in the intensity. And then you have the tape, which is similar to the tape button in the OP1, which gives you a tape stop, which is very familiar to OP1 users. And it has a few different ones. It has stop one, which we just heard, stop two, which is a faster tape stop, and pong, which goes back and forth. The TX6 also has an internal MIDI clock that you can use to sync devices. So here I've used the included cable and connected the OPZ with the TX6. And now if I press the selector button, I will enter a menu with a metronome. And this is where you control the internal tempo of the device. So right now it's paused and in order to start it, you simply press play and you can see the play symbol running, but nothing is happening. And the reason why is because there's no MIDI clock being sent in or out. So in order to fix this, you simply hold shift and then you start turning. So this means that there's MIDI clock in. So now the OPZ is sending the tempo and here you see the outs. So now we can control the OPZ using the TX6. So if I press here, it will now start playing. So you notice we're in a slower tempo and that's because the TX6 is controlling the tempo of the OPC. So if I start cranking it up, So this is obviously very useful when you're connecting several devices. Especially if you're connecting teenage engineering devices, you can link them all together using this as a master clock. And then you can use, for example, the pocket operators and the OP1 and use the click tracks that you can use from the aux cables going in and out. So they're all following the internal clock, the TX6. Another benefit of having them synced is that the effects we just looked at, a delay and tremolo, are now timed with the internal tempo. So we can hear now the tremolo is in sync with the tempo in the OPZ. The same with the delay.
so that's very nifty. These knobs or encoders can also be assigned various functions. So in order to access the main menu, you simply press and hold shift and the selector button. And here you have various items. We're going to talk about more of them in later videos. But right now, I'm just going to show you how you can assign different functions to the knobs. So if we scroll down to pots, press the selector button, we can see the current assignment of the knobs. So currently the EQ or equalizer is assigned to the knobs. Like we saw earlier, high, mid, low. Then we can go to custom. So here you have, you can assign different parameters to each knob. Here we, where you see TR, that means track. Here you can assign different parameters to each track separately. So by pressing the track button, we change what track is active. And the last one is for the synth, the internal synth. So I will make a video about that later. But let's have a look at what happens if we customize it and we put, for example, the filter on the blackish bluish knob. Then we have FX1 on the red one and you can leave the compressor on the white one. Go back to the main menu. Turn up the volume, turn up the tempo a little. Now we can adjust the filter with the top knob. You adjust the effects ascend. So this is a very useful feature. It lets you customize your mix and gives you a lot of autonomy for exactly how you want the mix to sound. So that was it for this video, exploring a few of the basic functions of the TX6 from Teenage Engineering. In the next video, I'm gonna explore some of the weirder features of the TX6. For example, the synth feature with its various sequencers. Like this, where everything is being played from the internal synth engines. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll see you soon with a breakdown of the synth engines and the DJ mode and all the other features. And in the meantime, you can check out this video right here where I break down everything you need to create your own home studio and start making music yourself.